This is Steve Piloff from George Mason University. I just wanted to go over a few things with future value of annuities and annuities due. Uh, the first is what should students be able to find. And if there's no extra cash flow, so we're just looking at a straight up annuity or annuity due, uh, students should be able to figure out the future value, the payment amount, the number of payments, or the rate. Um, pretty straightforward kinds of stuff. If there is a value, which really means an amount already saved, or some extra cash flow at time zero, students should be able to do all four of those items. When you have an initial value or, or an extra contribution at time zero, then the length of time between when that initial amount is and when we want to have the future value is n periods. And our annuity or annuity due also has n payments, so it can be done in one step. Now suppose we have a value or an extra cash flow um, at a time that's greater than zero, meaning not at time zero but later on. Then we're limited in some of the things that we expect our students to be able to do. We would expect to be able to find the future value. So you know you've got you know you've got your regular payments and you've got some extra payment here. You would simply find the future value of the extra payment. You'd find the future value of all the payments associate with the annuity that you do and just add them up and that's the future value how much again getting caught up in future values that if we make regular savings and then we also make an extra savings um, at some point how much will we have at the end just add them up payment amount how much so if we know that we're going to make an extra payment and we know what our goal is and we want to figure out then how much we need to save at regular intervals in the form of annuity or annuity due, what we need to do is say, okay, this extra payment, what's the, its future value going to be? Taking into account the fact that we might be dealing, you know, at time n here, and this is happening later, so it won't have all those periods to compound. So make sure to be very careful to identify how many periods it will compound. So we have the future value for that. We know what our total future value goal is, take the difference, and that's what these guys need to account for. And then it's as if you're solving a problem like that because you've adjusted your future value goal to only be the part that the annuity, the annuity due savings needs to account for. So now that we've done problems with the future value of annuities and annuities dues and present value of annuities and annuities dues, Timelines are incredibly useful to understand what's going on and what we're trying to figure out. But here's a bit of a summary table to help identify kind of present value type questions and future value type questions. Um, when you want to find the value, how much is the amount of a loan? What's the value of an asset? How much needs to be saved to make a certain number of payments of a certain amount? So this is the one to be particularly careful with because the idea is how much do I need to have at retirement in order to withdraw a certain amount every period for a certain amount of time? Um, and so you might think, oh, I'm saving, so it must be future value. But when you think about it, it's okay. I need how much do I need to have in my stack of money such that I can withdraw from it, and it's actually a present value, where the present value of all those withdrawals is equal to that stack of money. And again, all the future value is you know how much will be accumulated from savings. So again, notice this is on how much needs to be accumulated, and that's how much will be accumulated. Finding the payment, loan payment, or if I have a given amount of money, um, what's the regular cash flow? Here again, the focus is on how much should we save. The number of payments, um, if we're paying off a loan, so we borrow money, we're making regular payments, how many of those do we need to make to pay off the bill or pay off the loan? And if we have a certain amount of money, and we're going to withdraw a fixed amount from it. How many of those withdrawals can we take? And again, this is how much savings contributions will it take to reach some goal. So again, the future value is really all about saving, um, and the present value is often about loans or having a fixed cash flow that you withdraw from. And again, finding the interest rate alone or interest rate associated with an investment where you know 
it's worth a certain amount and it's going to pay you a fixed amount for a certain period of time and the rate that makes the present value of those fixed payments equal to the value at the beginning and the return needed to meet a savings target again you're going to be saving a certain amount each period so that you hit a target at a certain point in time what's the rate what's the return such that all those individual savings contributions compound over time and when you hit your target time that your target amount is what you'll have in the account